Hello and welcome back to the continuation of a Tailwind on Rails series. Now in the previous episodes we have created a responsive layout that has a sticky navbar and fixed uh, sidebar and you see when I scroll the page only the main part uh, of the content uh, scrolls and if I make the screen size uh, small then you see the sidebar completely disappears the main part of the content scrolls and there is this button to open a drop down menu. When I click the drop down menu, you see we have a scrollable drop down menu. The main part of the content does not scroll, it is blurred, and you can click the drop down menu by clicking escape or by clicking outside of the drop down or by clicking this button or even by just resizing the page. And now we are going to continue by uh, adding styles to the uh, but the main part of the content itself. So you see we have just this like main part of the content and we want to have an option to have different columns and to place content in different ways. So let's see a few examples. So here, for example, is the Super Rails website. And when you go to the lessons, you see there are three columns on a big screen. If I make the screen smaller, you see there are two uh, columns and on uh, a mobile screen, there is just one column of content. If we go to another type of uh, page, for example, the post show page where you can see and watch a specific video, you see there are two columns. So one really wide column and one narrow column. And when you make it uh, a smaller screen, you see everything is just in one column. So first we have uh, the first column of content and then in the end we have uh, the second column of content. And let's have a look at a few more examples. So here, for example, if we go to categories, you see, again, we have the same kind of layout as on posts. We have uh, uh, three columns on a big screen and uh, on a smaller screen, it would be uh, two columns and on a very small screen, it's one column. And if you go to another page like playlists, you see we have all the content just centered. So it's uh, just one column of content that is in the center of the page. So let's see how we can add uh, these types of really common uh, uh, content placements in our application. Uh, let's start by going back to our application and uh, let's see. So previously we just updated our application HTML file where we had uh, our navbar, the dropdown, our sidebar and our main part of the content. Now let's uh, see, let's, uh, uh, let's try creating uh, columns of content. So here you see we have uh, an iteration of lots of elements and let's uh, make uh, a column layout as we have uh, here. So three columns on big screen and small less columns on smaller screens. So uh, let's go back here. I will turn the p tags into divs and uh, I will add some uh, uh, wrapper around this, uh, this iteration. So uh, I will say div class, now we will add something. Okay, so here we have our records, we have 100 records on the page and each of them is uh, in a separate div and uh, they are all wrapped into a div. And we are going to add a grid layout. So I will say grid and uh, I will say grid columns three. And you see, now all the content is uh, in three columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Let's make it a bit bigger. Yeah, like this. So we have three columns. And if we make the screen smaller, you see it is still three columns. So we want to have a different quantity of columns based on the screen size. And to do this, we will say, so uh, on a small screen, it's going to be grid columns one. On a bigger screen, like medium, it will be uh, two columns and on the larger and bigger screens it is going to be three columns so I remind that uh, when building Tailwind CSS you always think of the smallest uh, size of the screen by default and uh, then put breakpoints on the changes that should take effect on bigger screens so uh, you know see I'm on a small screen we have one column on a bigger screen we have two columns and on a very big screen we have three columns of content so yeah, this is basically the basic use case of using grids uh, of columns, the same way I have it uh, here. Now let's see, do we need any improvements on this? Let's add some kind of coloring to this grid. I will add the background rows 200 here and the class background rows 300 here. 
and let's have a look at the space in between the elements. So you see, at the moment there is actually no real space between the elements. Let's add some space. So if I say space x2, for example, you see that there is a horizontal space of 2 between the elements. But you see, there is no space be before the first element. Let me maybe try making it a bit bigger. You see, there is no space between before the first element. If I add space uh, y2, you see, again, uh, there is no space before the first element. So instead of using space x or space y, I will use uh, uh, gap2, for example. And uh, going back, you see, there is an uh, equal proportion between all the elements. So looks uh, quite good. This is just one of the examples where you would use gap instead of uh, space. And uh, yeah, that's basically it for grids. Now, what if we want to have uh, uh, a centered layout? So all the content is centered in the middle. Let's uh, copy this and uh, add it on top. And uh, I will just say this will be centered and this will be grid. So here you see everything is in one column, it is on the side and it is very wide. And we want uh, the content to be kind of uh, centered like this on the page. When it is a big page and on a small page, it should take up all the space from the sides. So uh, to do this, I'm going to say uh, uh, here, where we have the centered MX Auto. If I just say MX Auto, it's not going to actually change anything because uh, the div itself kind of by default tries to take up all the space so i'm going to say width will be two out of three so it would be like 66 percent of the page and you see this is now this element is now centered uh, from both sides with equal proportions if i try to make a small screen you see um it is still centered uh, at 66 percent of the width from the sides. So on a small screen, we want it to take up all the space it can. So I will say with the full on small screen and on screens as of uh, large, it will be uh, two thirds. Let's make it a bit bigger and bigger. And you see on a bigger screen, it's taken up uh, two thirds of the main uh, width. And on a small screen, it's going to take up uh, all the space it can. I'll make this breakpoint uh, MD. Okay, so uh, yeah, just like this. And uh, let's try another type of layout. So as I have it uh, on uh, this page, uh, for example, you see we have two columns. One column that takes up a lot of space and one column that is really narrow. So let's try doing this. So. Uh, I will say to column layout, I will copy this out and uh, I'll remove the styles and uh, let's go back. So uh, we want to have two columns. So we'll have one div with uh, one column and another div with another column. Let's uh, copy this and wrap it into a separate div. And let's start like this will start for, with uh, 300 and with 400 and this one will be with 401 and and with uh, 500. Okay, so uh, you see now everything is uh, in just one line and we want it to be two separate columns. So I will say class will be flex. And now you see we have two columns, the first column and the second column right here. And we want them to take up, uh, well, all the space on the page. So on uh, one of them, I will say flex one. Let's go back and you see the first one is kind of uh, pushing the second one out. To demonstrate it better, I'm going to change the color. Let's make it uh, rows 400. 
Okay, see, so now this one is taking up all the available space on the page. We can also achieve a similar result in this case by adding flex grow instead of flex uh, one. You see, I refreshed and it is more or less the same. If we add the flex one to both uh, of them, they're going to take equal amounts of space. So in my case, I just want to say flex one on uh, the one that should take up all the space and nothing on the second. And let's see if uh, it looks good on mobile. You see, on mobile, we still have uh, these two columns, whereas we want to have uh, just one column on uh, mobile, like this, where we have uh, this column on top and this column on bottom. So I'm going to say flex, and it's going to be um, flex uh, column on a small screen. So I refresh, and you see we have the first part and the second part. But on a big screen, we want it to be a flex row. So we'll say MD is flex row. You see, a flex column and flex row are kind of uh, opposites. So you see, it gives us an error if we try to have them both. So on a small screen, everything is going to be uh, horizontal and uh, oh, vertical, I mean. And on a bigger screen, it's going to be horizontal. Let's uh, refresh and see if it works. So here we are. I'm going to make it a small screen. And you see it is uh, placed correctly. Okay. Let's uh, try adding some uh, space between these two columns. So, uh, okay, I'm refreshing. Yeah, I made a typo. Okay, let's try adding some space between these two elements. So uh, I can try saying uh, uh, margin left uh, four, for example. And you see we have uh, this space between these two elements. If I make the screen smaller and scroll down, you see we still have this margin four. So we would want to have margin four only on a bigger screen. So if the screen is MD and more, then we'll have margin four. I refresh, you see, uh, the first element, the second element look fine, but on the biggest screen we have margin 4. But a better way than using this margin 4, I think, would be again to use uh, gap. So I will say gap 4, for example. And now I refresh, you see it's again taken up uh, uh, this space, but on a small screen it is... Uh, just invisible this gap. So we did not have to actually uh, add any breakpoints. So the gap option in this case is better than margins. And uh, let's try another thing. You see in um, my application here, I uh, set more or less fixed widths of these two elements. I want to, I actually know that this element should take out like 75% of the page and this one should be like 25%. So, um, Instead of uh, uh, flex one here and nothing here, I can set uh, more kind of fixed widths of these elements. So uh, I'm just going to copy this out. And uh, I will say two column layout with uh, fixed widths. And uh, instead of flex one, I will say that this element should be uh, five out of six wide, or let's say three out of four, and this one should be uh, one out of four. So together it's 100%, and this one is 75%. I refresh and go back, and you see this one is 75% uh, wide, and this one is 25% wide, comparing to what we had before, where this one takes up all the available space, and this one takes up as little space as it can. So uh, what if we make the screen uh, smaller? Uh, you see, it is still taking up 75% uh, of the space, and here it's taking up 25% of the space. So I will say that uh, it's going to be actually width uh, full, but on a bigger screen it's going to take up 75%, uh, and here, same, it's going to be width full on a small screen, but 25% on a bigger screen. I refresh. And you see now it's taking up all the space it can on a, a smaller screen and uh, on a bigger screen it's taking up 75% of the space and 25% of the space. 
So yeah, these are some uh, basic uh, layouts that you would want to have in your application and I uh, hope it helps you in uh, making responsive apps. Thanks for being with me and see you in the next one.